What's going on guys and welcome to the video. So in this video, I'm gonna be talking about how to grow your chest. I'm gonna walk you through a chest workout. I'm heading to the gym in about an hour and a half. We're gonna train there, I'm gonna walk you through the workout, provide you some tips that I like to incorporate. And about an hour and a half prior to the workout, I'm gonna have my pre-workout meal which is breakfast because it's the morning. So what I have here is blueberries, raw honey, a banana, five whole eggs. These eggs are from a local farm with salt and pepper, and then shiitake mushrooms that are cooked and sauteed in olive oil. I've been obsessed with shiitake mushrooms uh, the last couple of weeks, so I've been having them with my breakfast every morning. But this right here is the pre-workout meal, some fats, some proteins, some carbs, that'll fuel us through the training session. So I'm gonna eat this, let it digest, and then head to the gym, and I'll see you guys there. All right, so here's what I am taking prior to this training session. I have one scoop of flight, which is our pre-workout. This has stimulants in it. It's gonna get me going. Tunnel vision focus, energy. I have one scoop of creatine from Korea Pure. I take five grams of creatine every single day on training days and non-training days. And then a scoop of Endo Pump, which is our non-stim pump enhancer. This is gonna increase blood flow to those muscles being trained. You're gonna get better pumps, muscular contractions, and mind-muscle connection. Now, what we're gonna cover in this video, I'm gonna talk about how to warm up or how I like to warm up for my strength training sessions. Then I'm gonna talk about training the two different heads of the chest. You have the upper and the lower. Now there's like three planes of movement that I like to focus on during a chest training uh, workout. One of those is a flat bench using either dumbbells, barbells, machines. One of those is an incline to work the upper and another is gonna be across the body, either a dumbbell, cable, or machine fly. Uh, we're gonna talk about the difference between hypertrophy and strength training, why you need to be incorporating accessory movements for more volume other than those big compound movements, and how to adjust and train for volume based off your experience in strength training. So that's what we're gonna cover. We're gonna mix up this pre-workout, throw it back, get in the zone, and go train. All right, so the warm up, three sets. Each set is 20 calories. On the assault runner, my pace was like a 545 pace. And then 20 calories on the Concept 2 bike at resistance 10. Resistance the whole way up. So three tests of that, no rest in between. 20 cal, 20 cal but I can tell a big difference from a strength training perspective when I do a workout or a warm up like this and when I don't. I wanna get my heart rate up. I wanna start sweating. It primes me to move some weight and it kinda of just wakes up the muscles, wakes up the mind. opinion and a lot of people's opinions that are a whole lot smarter than me the barbell bench press is the best way to grow your chest it is a great strength movement it is a great hypertrophy movement and it works and activates a lot of muscles the triceps the chest some shoulders now positioning on the bench press is critical because you want to be locked in so you can move as much weight as possible now one thing I like to do to be locked into the bench when I'm going super heavy is on a lot of pads, like, you know, if you're wearing a t-shirt or you're sweaty, this will be very slippery. You can take a, a band, a resistance band, and wrap this around the pad. What this will do is, I mean, this will, you'll stick to this thing. So you can throw some of these bands in your gym bag, take them into your local gym, and this will help you stick to that pad a whole lot better. Now today what we're gonna do is work up to a three rep max, and the way I'll start is just 
as you saw my warm up, I'm, I'm activating my, my shoulders, protecting my rotator, rotator cuff and my chest with some band work, some light internal and external rotation with light dumbbells. And then I'll bench press with the bar 135, 185, 225, 275, and then we'll kind of see where we end up from there. Here's a, a really good tip for the, your bench press. Think of a few cues for your setup. One, think of three points of contact. Your, your shoulder blades are tight into that pad. Those shoulder blades aren't moving. That is just stuck there, and that's one of the reasons for these bands. The second is your butt. You should be trying to keep your butt on that pad. And the third is think of driving through your heels. Think of this movement as almost full body where you're bringing that bar down. When you go to explode, you're pushing through the heels of your feet, up into your legs, through your, your glutes and your butt, and then driving that power through your shoulders up. Use your legs on this movement. Drive through your legs. Think of, think of your body as like these Spartans in the movie 300. This is where we fight! This is where they die! And they're just ready to attack. They're here, they're here, they're here. And then once they are given the command to attack, it's full force. They all move together as one. Think of that as like your, your big strength training sets on the barbell bench press. We want to be rested, recovered, and when we go into that set, it is all force production, moving that weight to fully activate. This is Sparta! So right now, uh, we'll work up to, I have 285 on the bar. This is where we'll, we'll probably end for our, our three at max today. We'll see. Now one thing you can do at the end of a compound movement after all your heavy working sets are done is do a drop set and an AMRAP. So drop set means drop the amount of weight you're doing. I just went from 275 to 225 and an AMRAP, as many reps as possible. We're gonna see how many reps we can do to failure. This is an RPE 10 with 225. That's a great way to add some more volume and hypertrophy at the end of a compound strength training set. Twelve reps. Twelve reps. That was the first exercise of this workout. Now for the incline, what I'm doing is a dumbbell incline press with hypertrophy or volume higher rep ranges, say 10, 12, 15 reps. The goal is tissue growth. We want to really break down that muscle tissue in order for it to repair and grow. And that comes with higher rep ranges. With that, rest periods also decrease a little bit. So I'm resting anywhere from 45 seconds to 60 seconds in between each set.
Okay, the next movement that we're gonna focus on, like I said, across the body, is flies. Now, you can either do flies with machines, with cables, with dumbbells. It's, it's kind of a personal preference. I like cables or machines. I don't do dumbbells as much because it can put your shoulders in a compromised position. Now, what we're gonna do to spice this one up is a superset. So it's going to be about 10 to 15 set or 15 reps of flies directly into push-ups as many reps as possible. But we'll rest about 60 to 90 seconds in between there and do four sets total. Now directly into push-ups. Like I said, the difference between like a, a strength training set and a hypertrophy set, the fatigue should feel a little different, right? Like when I'm on bench press going for for a three rep max, that fatigue is like your body just can't. It can't recruit enough muscle fibers and fire off enough neurons to, to move that weight any longer. With higher rep ranges, hypertrophy, we're trying to force that tissue to grow. It feels like it's, yeah, I mean, right now my chest is on fire. All that, that acid is building up in the muscles. It's a different level and type of fatigue. So that's my thought process intent behind a strength training set and a hypertrophy set. So the last movement we're gonna add into today's workout is dips. A lot of times dips are seen as a tricep exercise, but they're a great chest exercise. You just wanna fall deeper into the hole. And one of the things to keep in mind for hypertrophy and strength training, just like endurance training. You know, we just came off of this big marathon prep. We talked a lot about training volume. Training volume was measured in terms of mileage for a week, mileage for a training session, mileage for a critical velocity or tempo workout. The same thing is applied to strength training where over time, we should see an increase in training volume. How do we increase training volume in terms of strength training? One, we can increase the weight that we're using. Two, we can increase the reps that we're doing. Three, we can increase the, the sets that we're doing. Four, we can increase all, all of them. Over time, what we'll see with strength training, with hypertrophy, is that you will get stronger because your body is acclimating and adapting to that stimulus. So we're gonna wrap this up with some dips. You should feel this. If you're not feeling this, move a little bit slower. You might be moving too fast. All right guys, so that wraps up this video. I hope you took away some, some really strong key takeaways from growing your chest or being able to grow your chest. Now, what we're wrapping up today with is our post-workout meal. I showed you the pre-workout meal. This is what I'm having immediately after this training session is done. This right here is seven ounces of 80-20 grass-fed, grass-finished ground beef. I have 300 grams of quinoa. Quinoa has been like my go-to carb source recently, that with a lot of fruit and honey. And then I have some spinach here in the middle. Spinach is a really easy vegetable just to prep. You take this much spinach, you heat it up, it's like this. And it takes a few minutes to kind of prep. What I'm gonna throw in here is beef tallow. It's a really good source of fat, steric acid fat. I'm gonna throw about a tablespoon in here to get more dietary fat. But this is the post-workout meal. So, Hope you guys enjoyed this video and we'll see you guys in the next one. All right guys, thanks for tuning in to another video. And if you enjoyed it, please make sure to like the video, comment below and subscribe if you are new. And while you're here, click the video that is right here. This is the sub 250 marathon from the Buffalo, New York marathon we did about a month ago, the 248 marathon. Check out this video and we'll see you guys in the next one.